So uh, uh, yesterday we were uh, we, we were discussing uh, increment and analysis, or or in other way, other way of saying the same thing is we were discussing uh, how to deal with nonlinear networks, and the premise that we took was essentially the fact that we we really don't have a framework to analyze a generic nonlinear network. So we wanted to see if there are, we can play some tricks on this generic nonlinear network to, to modify it to our liking so that we can transform it to a linear network. And why do we want to do that? Because we have a whole bunch of frameworks to analyze linear systems, right? So that essentially was the crux of the argument. So we, we started off with, a, with an example of, of, a, of a diode. But uh, some of you came to me at the end of last class and even emailed me saying that, yes. Hello. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, so I got a feedback from a few of you at the end of last class was, was that you would want to have a, a bit more uh, uh, clarity on how we deal with uh, this uh, nonlinear networks in terms of incremental models. So what I would like to do is, is, is to uh, take this class uh, to, uh, to reinforce what, we, what I was discussing yesterday. And hopefully this will, uh, this will convince you that what we are doing it will be uh, will be beneficial for the rest of the course. One of the reasons I want to reinforce this is because the outcome of of uh, these concepts will essentially be the bedrock of on which this entire course rests. And not only this entire course, course, uh, any analog circuit course that you would like you that you would take going forward will require the increment and analysis. Uh, and because of that reason. Let's pay it its due respect, right? Okay. So uh, instead of taking a diode, we'll come back to the diode. Instead of taking a diode, let's like, let's assume that there is a generic nonlinear element, right? There's a generic nonlinear two two terminal element, and its current voltage relationship is guided by, let's say you have a voltage V across it, so the current through it is F of V. Okay, and let's assume it's a part of a broader network. Maybe you have it's connected to some some network, and you have a battery connected at another port. Okay, and let's assume this is this battery. This battery is VA. So essentially. Uh, uh, the the question that we are asking is how do we how do we deal with any network that has one or more of these nonlinear elements right it did not be a diode it can be any 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 form of nonlinearity so this is i equal to f of v now i mean this f of v can be any form of nonlinearity let's just sketch a random form of nonlinearity so let's say it's something like this, right? So now from, from, uh, from your basic, uh, uh, from our knowledge of basic uh, calculus, we know that let's assume, if, if we assume a certain point, certain uh, point, uh, point on this curve, let's assume we have, we are operating at a certain point on this curve, this is, let, let me call it V1, let, let me call this I1, right? And I want to, I want to understand how, what will be I1 if I change V1 by V1 plus delta V, right? So this is V1. I want to go from V1 to let's say V1 plus delta V, right? So essentially what I'm asking is, what will be, what will be I1, which is a new I1, which will be I1 plus delta I1, 
that is f of v1 still there. So obviously, I can plug these values on the on the curve, given that I know what this curve looks like. But let's assume that we don't want to do that. What are the other ways of figuring out what will be uh, i1 plus delta 1? OK, let's, let's not get into small signal right now. I, I wanted to get to that uh, in another 10, 15 minutes, right? So let's assume that you know Taylor series, right? You know Taylor series. Then how do you, how, how do you get to know v1 plus delta v? You would expand this. You would expand this function into a Taylor series expansion around v1, right? So what you'll do, you will say f of v1 plus delta v f dash v1 plus delta v square by factorial 2, double derivative of v1, and so on. Now, now from again going back to basic calculus, if I assume this delta v to be infinitesimally small, right? If I assume delta v to be infinitesimally small, I can essentially neglect most of the higher order terms. Right, and I can say that my new i one, that is i one plus delta i one, can be is approximately equal to f of v one plus delta v f dash v one. Right. So this, what is f dash v one? f dash v1 is essentially the tangent at i1 v1, right? So, so essentially what I am trying to get at here is that if I have, if, if I have the knowledge of this point i1 comma v1, and I want to see how this curve behaves in the vicinity of i1 comma v1, what I am, what am I trying to do? I am essentially trying to get hold of this point. I'm trying to get hold of this point. And the whole purpose of doing this approximation is to say that if this point is close enough, if this point is close enough, then I would, uh, I can approximate this curve between this initial point and the final point with a straight line. And the slope of this straight line will be f dash v1. And if I know the slope, I know the initial point, then I would be able to figure out what the final point is, right? So essentially, what we are trying to do is trying to figure out the tangent to the point of a to a point in, in the nonlinear network. Right? Okay, good. So now how does it correlate with what we are saying and why one might one might be one might come and tell me that hey why if i already know f of v1 why am i bothering to do all this tangent business i can simply plug in the values and get the values of that's a natural question that might appear so now the problem is the problem here is the following the problem is you might know i equal to f of v1 but how is that V1 generated? The V1 might be generated with, v, that, that, that V1 might be uh, a function of a bunch of other variables. And I might not be interested to get the answer in terms of all the variables. I might be interested to get the answer in terms of some other part, one particular variable. So the problem then comes out to be that, how do I, how do I get a single variable out and still able to, still I'm able to figure out what this next point, that is what, what will be f of v1 plus delta v. So that will be clear if I, if I try to uh, figure out what will be uh, the new i in this generic nonlinear network. Because, because let's assume that you have set, up, set this network up. Now let's turn our attention to this network. Let's assume that you have set this network up and you have put in some numerical, numeric effort or put in some iterative effort 
to figure out what is this i that is for this uh, generic for this generic form of nonlinearity let's assume that you have figured out this v is equal to some function of some new function of f1 of va why did i say f1 of va because it's not necessary that you uh, you might know i and v in terms i mean I, you might uh, okay let me let me rephrase what i'm trying to say so you know you know the relationship between i and v that close to the network but what is what is the i and v in terms of the parameters that is driving this circuit? What is driving this circuit? In this particular case, a voltage source is driving this circuit. So ultimately, you would like to know this f of v, this v will be a function of va, right? And we are interested to know all the parameters of the circuit in terms of va, not necessarily what is the parameter of the circuit which, which, which is governed by the current voltage relationship of each, each element. I already know the current voltage relationship of each element. A critical point is that case of diode. I know if I know the voltage across a diode, I will be able to figure out what is the voltage, what is the current through it. But that's not what we are, that's not what the question is. The question is, how do I figure out what the voltage and the current, voltage across the diode and the current through the diode is with respect to the driving point, what driving the voltage source, right? What in terms of driving excitation. So when so so the question then boils down to how do I express these V's and I's through these elements in terms of the original driving source? So 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 essentially what it boils down to is that you will not get this. Even though this, this curve is valid and you know the, know the analytical formation of this curve, you will be, it will be difficult for you to figure out what will be the analytical form of V in terms of VA. Because you have a transformation here. So given that you know exactly what the analytical form of each element is, what is the analytical expression of each element, uh, what is analytical relation of each element between its own V and I, you don't really know what is the analytical uh, expression of, of the current and the voltage across and through the element in terms of a source that has been applied at some other part of the circuit, right? So because you don't know that, it becomes, if you get, you end up with transcendental equations, you end up with, you end up with nonlinear set of equations, and because of that reason, you would want a you would want a framework to figure out if I stick in a generic nonlinear element into our, into our network, how do I how do I get across? How do I make my life easy? Now, having said that, having said that, uh, how do I how do I deal with this in this case? So, so in in this particular case, let's assume that you have put in the effort, all these numerical stuff you have done. And you have figured out this current I is equal to uh, okay. So let's assume that you this under some condition of VA, you have found that this current is equal to I1. So this you have found numerically, iteratively, right? So you have found. We have found I1, V1 using iteration. Okay. So the question then boils down to what if now I stick in another voltage source instead of VA? Right? So what if I stick in another voltage source instead of VA? And I say that I would like to stick in another voltage source. Instead of sticking in another voltage source, I will I will 
uh, call this an extra voltage on top of V. That delta V can be anything. I mean, with any with this delta V, you can essentially design any voltage source, right? V A plus or minus delta V can give you any other value. So now the question boils down to: Do I again go and do this iterative method, or do I have a smarter way of figuring out what will be the new current and voltage through this nonlinear element? Okay. So so let's if if that's the case, then we know that this voltage and the current through the nonlinear element will change. It might increase, it might decrease, we don't know, but we know that it will change. If it changes, so if this, this was initially I1, V1, we know that it will change and let, if we can associate that change as V1 plus delta V, V1, and this to be I1 plus delta I1. Okay. So now, note that I can simply now say that this, the, since I know the relationship between delta I1 and delta V1 via the Taylor series expansion that we have done, this. Correct. In, when, when you mean initially, you mean this, this example? So here I didn't mention how do we change. Here, we took a genetic case and said that if it changes, what happens? I didn't talk about the cause that changed it. The cause can be anything, right? Any other perturbation in your network can change any voltage and so uh, current in the network, right? Everything is interlinked. You change one, one, one element or one source by certain amount, everything gets affected, right? So that essentially now I am I'm trying to tie that change with the change in source. Okay. Yes. Yes, you will require, right? Exactly. So tie back to the uh, discussion that we had in the yesterday, right? So in order to figure out I1, V1, in terms of VA, that is when you had a diode in place, you needed to know if there is an R in the network also, right? So in this case, whatever you have inside is essentially affecting whatever you will be having across the nonlinear element also. So you would require that you would require that information. So that's why if you didn't require the information, then it were, it wasn't a problem at all, right? I I would simply plug in the values because I know exactly. For example, if I give you a diode equation and say that hey, my new voltage is this one, what is without what is the new current? Simple, just plug in the value of the new voltage. But the key is, I don't know what that new voltage is, right? I neither do I know what is the new current is or the new voltage is because I have changed some other parameter of the circuit, which is going to affect the voltage across the nonlinear element and the current across the nonlinear element. And I am trying to figure out what is the effect of the current and voltage in the nonlinear element based on some change that I have done at some other part of the network. Okay. Thank you for the questions, good questions. Okay, so, uh, so now, uh, now we are, now that we have this framework, we are in safe territory. And why do I say so? We know that if I know, if I know what is uh, I1, V1 at a certain point, because I, I know what the curve is, what the curve, I know what the relationship between I1 and V1 is for this particular element, and I have, Put in an effort to figure out the origin. Uh, to, to put in an effort to figure out what was the what was the uh, initial condition or the initial uh, I one V one from which I started before I put in that increment, which essentially means that I I have the two necessary conditions required to figure out where I am going where the uh, where I'll be on the curve, given that I know f of v and I know where I am on the curve to start on. So the first numerical approximation helps us to find this point. And the knowledge of the curve helps us to find the next point. Right? Are you with me till now? Okay. Okay, so, so this is important, so I'll repeat it again. So 
in order to figure out where I, what will be this current and the voltage uh, across this nonlinear element for any generic input voltage, I need two information. I need to figure out for certain values of input, at least for one value of input, what is the current voltage pair across the, across the element. If I know that, and I know what is the interdependence of current and the voltage of that particular nonlinear element, then that's all. These are the two information I, I require. I don't require any other information, right? So the first information you have to figure out using some sort of iteration or some smart way of figuring out, uh, put in a one-time effort to figure out what is the I1, V1, right? And the second effort is the knowledge of the current voltage relationship of the nonlinear element. These two are again one-time efforts. So as long as you put in that one-time effort, all the other points on the curve will be, will be easy to derive. And it becomes particularly easy. It becomes particularly easy if the if this deviation delta v is small. Because if the deviation delta v is small, all the information that you require is the initial i1 v1 and the slope around i1 v1. Right? If you know the initial i1 v1 and you know the slope of our i1 v1, you know where I will while the new i1 will be if I change v1 by v1 plus delta v. Simply the original I1 V1 plus the slope times delta V. Right? It's similar to similar to the relationship of distance and speed, right? You know where you are right now. If you know your speed, you know where you'll be at the next instant. Right? Exactly the exactly the same thing. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. Correct. You can find all points if you have the information of all the diff all the uh, higher order differential. If you know if double dash, if you know if triple dash, then you can afford to go slightly away from the initial point also. It's equivalent to saying that if I'm accelerating, right? I, I If my second derivative is valid, if I'm accelerating, then you know the information, you need the information of second derivative to, to be more accurate to know where you are at an elongated period of time, right? And if you don't know that, you will make an error, but the error goes down if you narrow down your period of observation. The same thing here. Yes. Pardon? Ah, okay. So, good question. So, I was expecting this question from somebody. Thank you for bringing it up. So his question is, are we assuming the delta V to be same across the delta V that we have here? Is it the same as the delta V1 that I applied, that I assumed over here? No, it cannot be, right? If I know that, then I don't even have to put in this effort. Isn't it? So I know the I and V of the, of the, of, of, of this, across this element or through this element. If I already know the V, then I don't have to know anything else. I can just put in the value of delta V, V plus delta V into F of V plus delta V and I'm done. It is because we don't know, we need to know both delta V across the element and delta I through the element. We have to put in this effort, right? Yes. Then how are we connecting it with delta V? Ah, okay, so that connection will happen by this again, this numerical iterative method, right? So that connect. So so note that note that this tangent to this curve is dependent on where you are on this curve also, right? So you need to know not only the tangent information is necessary. You also need to know where you are on the curve, right? So one second. So the where you are on the curve is dependent on this initial iterative method. You have to put in that effort to find out 
through iteration or through a numerical solver or some other approximation, some way, approximate way to figure out where you are on the plot. If you know where you are on the plot, then you, since you have the information of the plot in terms of its own I and B, you know the tangent at all points of the plot. That's all, right? Now you all you need to know is that where is I, where am I in terms of I1, V1? And it now I put in this delta V where I will get what I will uh, what will be the delta I, right? So and why is this why now the question begs that I if I don't know delta V1, if I don't know delta I1, how am I getting delta V1, delta I1? So that is that that we will get because if you recall from yesterday's class, if you subtract this final point from the initial point, you end up with a very linear equation. Now we know how to solve linear equations to death. That transformation, the final transformation will help us in figuring out now what will be this delta V delta I in terms of the applied delta VA. Right? So I, I'll get to that. Yes, you had a question. So delta I1. I want to delta I want to delta V1 expression. Yeah, right. You are right. I mean, at that time I made a blasphemy of symbols. Thank you. Yes. Right. Essentially, you are try, try, trying to tell, tell, ask me, how do I get delta V1 from delta V, right? So that was his question also. So now let me take a, go back to yesterday's example and show you how do we do that, okay? So now let's move from this, let's recap. I mean, let's revisit what we were doing yesterday. So what do we know about the diode? We know that if, if this current is I1, if this current is I1, I know I1 is equal to some Is e to the power V1 by Vt, which is approximately because, because I am neglecting the minus one term, forward bias, so on, right? So clearly a nonlinear expression. So now in order to figure out uh, what will be this quiescent? Uh, what will be this quiescent I1 V1? I need to write the KVL across uh, through this loop. So that is PA is equal to I1 R plus V1. And what is this V1? This V1 is Vt ln of I1 by is right so now clearly you have to put some iterative effort to figure out what is this i1 then you know what is this v1 right so let's assume we have done that okay so let's assume we have done that we know what is quiescent i1 and what is quiescent v1 by putting in this effort now what am i doing i am saying that i am putting in an extra delta v let me be explicit and say delta V A. So I'm putting in that extra delta V A and I'm trying to figure out what will be this extra delta I1 and what will be this extra delta V1. So what do I do now? I simply say that I'll rewrite this equation again in terms of uh, KVL. I can say that the new, new equation will be V A plus delta V A will be I1 plus delta I1 times R plus Vt. Instead of writing ln, I am just writing, I am write, I will write in terms of some function, right? F of I1. Right? Sorry, yeah, thank you. I1 plus del I1. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll simply let me generalize it and simply write this also as f of i1. And at the back of your mind, you already know that f of i1 is, for the case of diode, is Vt 
ln of i1 by okay so now uh, we do again we we play the same game we do a taylor series expansion of of this around i1 and we neglect the higher order terms if delta v is sufficiently small okay again the tangent approximation sorry f of i1 is sufficiently small oh correct so no so let me remove this here otherwise it will lead to other problems later on thank you thank you uh, uh, okay so uh, so if i if i expand this so va plus delta va is equal to i1 plus delta i1 r plus vt f of i1 plus delta i1 f dash i1 okay fine so now what do i do i have let's I say this is equation 2 and let's say this is equation 1 i subtract equation 1 from 2 what does the subtraction mean essentially the subtraction means that i am trying to figure out what is this what is this increment right so if i subtract what do i get i essentially get delta va will be equal to so this is 2 minus 1 so delta va is equal to delta i1 r plus delta i1 f dash okay fine yeah times vt you are right thank you right so now note that what type of equation is this this is a linear equation this is a linear equation between the incremental <laughs> delta va and incremental delta i1 note that okay. delta va was applied not across the diode the delta va was applied somewhere else in the circuit but i have been by doing this incremental analysis i have been able to relate the change the, the that delta va with a delta v across the across the diode or delta i across the diode if i now if i know delta i across the diode getting delta v across the diode is trivial i just put into the iv characteristics in the, of the of the diode does it make sense okay so now what will be, now if i jump back to diode what is f dash i1 what will be f dash i1 Just differentiate this. It will be one by i one, right? So, in case of in case of a diode, you get delta V A to be equal to delta i one R plus delta i one V T by. Now, note that note that this f dash i one, which is a slope, is dependent on i one, right? So, so that incremental equation that you are getting, the incremental linear equation that you are getting is dependent on the initial points that you had, right? Because the parameters of this new incremental equation are dependent on the initial I1 view. So this initial I1, V1 are called operating points. or quiescent points of the diode right so big 
Now you can, I mean, if you have multiple nonlinear elements, you will have multiples of these I1s and V1s. So all of them will, will be referred to as what is the operating point, what is the operating condition, what is the quiescent point of those nonlinear elements. And sometimes we say that what is the quiescent, uh, what is the operating point of the network? When I say what is the operating point of the network, essentially what we are trying to uh, uh, ask is what is the quiescent point across, what is the quiescent I and V across all the branches uh, through all the through all the elements. Right. And why is that important? That is important because even though, even though the final incremental uh, relationship between the currents and voltages is perfectly linear, but the parameters governing these incremental currents and voltages are dependent on the initial quiescent points or the quiescent points because, because this derivatives, right? The derivatives depend on where you are on the curve of that nonlinear element, right? Okay. Yes. Excellent. Yes, you have to. What his point is, I mean, this question was raised in a different manner a uh, few minutes back. His point was, his, his point is, if we move, uh, if we move, if, if, if delta VA is large, right, then can I write this? We cannot write this because we could write this because we have neglected the higher order derivatives. If delta VA is large, now note that if delta VA is large, what is happening? This delta V, V squared, V cube, these terms will start dominating and I will have more and more error, right? So we cannot. So this, that is why, that is why instead of calling this incremental analysis, when we neglect these higher order terms, we call it a small signal analysis, right? The small essentially means that I have neglected the higher order incremental terms. Yeah. And obviously that with that, I am incurring error, but you saying this error is small enough not to affect the overall performance of my circuit. Okay, does that make sense? Oh, so uh, now let's look at this equation, the final incremental equation that we had, that, that we are, that we came up with, right? So, so initial circuit was this. This we know. Now, what is this? I mean, what does this equation tell you? What type of circuit is this? An equation can is, I mean, a current voltage equation is a, uh, in a mathematical formation is another way of expressing something that is happening in the network, right? Because it's vice versa. If you can get an equation from a circuit, you can get a circuit from equation, right? There's nothing that tells you you cannot go backwards. So what type of circuit do you think this, uh, the stuff within the box is, pointing to it's an lti can you be more specific okay so what is driving this what is the driving uh, source yeah. va delta v or va yeah. delta v i'm pointing to this equation i'm pointing to this equation so i have a it essentially means that i have a source of delta va what else I have a resistor R and I have another resistor, which is, I have another resistor. In this case, I have, I mean, looking at this equation, it seems like I have another resistor, which is, whose value is VTY I1, right? And the same current Delta I1 is flowing through both this resistor and that resistor, which means these two are in series, right? So, which essentially means that this diode gets replaced with a resistor, of value, let's say RD, which is equal to VT by I. Okay. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So now let's assume that you have, uh, let's take some numbers, right? Let's take some numbers and say, uh, let me say that 
you have uh, a card in each, uh, you, you had set up this equation, you had set up this condition of, uh, uh, of this figure such so that your voltage across V1, right, voltage, the voltage, uh, the voltage across the diode, that is V1, is approximately equal to 650 millivolt. Okay. And let's say your I1 was approximately equal to 1 milliamps and your VA was 1.65 volts. Okay. So now I, what I'm asking is, what I'm asking is I want to change VA from 1.65 volts to 1.66 volts, let's say, or let's say 1.75 volts. So I want to change VA, the new VA will be 1.75 volts. So how do I figure out what will be the new I1 in this network? So help me out, help me out. So what will be the new I1? So delta V from, uh, just because I am going from here to there, I know what is delta VA. So delta VA is equal to 0 0.1 volt, good. And which network are you looking at now? You are looking at this network. You are looking at this network because moment you are in the delta VA domain, you are in the incremental domain, you are no longer bothered about looking at the nonlinear network. In the, at the back of your mind, you must tell yourself that I am looking at the incremental network now because I'm trying to figure out what is the change, right? So how do I figure out what is the change now? If I have this delta VA equal to 0 0.1 volt, and what, I, what am I trying to figure out here? Uh, which current and voltage am I trying to figure out? Right, so I am, uh, I am trying to figure out the change across this, this resistor, because note that this diode had transformed into this resistance. If I have to know, if I have to figure out what is the actual voltage change across the diode, I'll have to figure out what is the actual voltage change across that resistor, which got transformed from the, from the diode. So this is easy because simple uh, R by R network. So what will be my delta V1? So my delta V1 will be 0 0.1 times Rd by R plus Rd. Okay. Yes. Good question. Good question. His question is, how do I know that 100 millivolt is small? Right? I don't know. So how do I know in, in, in case of numerical approximation, how do I know anything? I do it first and then go back and check. Right? I do it first and then go back and check, put these values back into the original equation and see if my initial assumption is correct. Right? So if, I mean, if you are, if you don't know you, what you will have to do, you have to take all the derivatives, which is not possible, right? Because it's, it, I mean, note that we are doing, we are essentially doing all these things because mathematics constraints us from evaluating a nonlinear equation in a generic form. If mathematics had given us a framework to evaluate a nonlinear equation in its generic form, I wouldn't have bothered going into this, right? I am going into this because we don't know. If tomorrow somebody comes up, some, uh, some field medalist comes up and tells me that, hey, this is the new form of figuring out uh, uh, nonlinear solutions of nonlinear equations, all these things will go into the garbage. We'll, we'll, take, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go into that. Domain. But till now, we don't know. So we are resorting to this. Okay. So, so now, uh, what is Rd now? You know what is Vt, right? Vt at room is approximately 26 millivolt. In this case, I have given you I1. So what is Rd? Twenty-six ohms. Right? What is R? Given this condition that I have told you, 
1000. Yeah, 1000, 1K, right? So basically, you know the current, you know these two voltages, you know R. So, so this essentially then becomes 0 0.1 times 26 by 1026, whatever the value that might be. So now if you know this delta VA, what is the total new, new, new V1, the total V1? Delta V1 plus exactly. So the new V1 will be the, the original V1 plus the increment, right? Again, I, I'll take you back to this curve. The new V1 is the, ori the original V1 plus the increment, or the new I1 will be the original I1 plus the increment. All you need to know is one, either one of them. So that your new V1, so V1, this is V1 plus delta V1, will be the original V1, which was 650 millivolt, <laughs> plus 0 0.1 into 26 by 1026 times 1000 millivolt. Yes. Uh, okay, how did we know the value of the resistor? What is RD? RD is VT by I1. Okay, so okay, how did I know this value of resistor? Uh, what is VA? V, VA is 1.65. Given I have give, told you that V1 we have observed to be 650 millivolts. I know the current, which is also I have given you, which is 1 milliamps. So from there, you know what the value of R is. Okay, okay, great. So, so, so to, to, to wrap things, uh, what did we essentially uh, do today? We essentially today designed a framework. Uh, I, I mean, I hope that I have been able to convince you that uh, a framework is necessary to figure out what is uh, given, if, given a quiescent operating point or a quiescent point or an operating point of a network, a framework is necessary to figure out what will be the effect of an incremental change what will be the effect of an incremental change if I change something at some other part of the network? And that framework essentially is the framework of incremental analysis. Or if I say that that change is small enough, that framework is what we call a small signal analysis. And if we impose, if, if we go ahead and do this small signal analysis, we can, we can end up with a set of equations which relates the the incremental changes at the source with the incremental changes at the destination with a linear network with a linear set of equations right and when you do this transformation each of these nonlinear network nonlinear uh, elements get transformed into a linear equivalent in this case a diode got transformed into a resistor right and this transformation is based on the slope of the IV, I, IV characteristics of that nonlinear element, right? So now quickly tell me, I mean, this is again very obvious. How does a resistor get transformed into its incremental mo model? So fine, a resistor gets transformed into resistor, uh, a diode, gets transformed into a resistor. What about a, what about a voltage source? Yeah, it gets transformed into a short, why? Right, so essentially, if I, if I say that, what is the IV characteristics of a voltage source? If this is V, this is I, right? Or rather, if I say this is I, this is V, right? What do I see? It's a straight line. So slope is zero. Slope is zero means your the stuff that you are essentially seeing, this derivative is zero, which means this gets transformed with a short. A current a similarly a constant current source gets transformed into an open circuit. What about a capacitor? A capacitor is a linear network, nonlinear linear element or nonlinear element? It's a linear element, which means 
it's no slope is same, right? What is linearity? Slope remains, slope has to remain same. So which means a capacitor gets transformed into a capacitance and the inductance gets transformed into an inductance, right? No surprises there. So till now, I mean, we should not be surprised because all these, are everything other than the diode are linear elements. So we have done analysis of linear elements uh, since kingdom come. So we know that nothing happens. We essentially have to write the KCL KVL and get it done. All we are trying to do is to transform these pesky nonlinear things into things domain of our knowledge, in the domain of our competence. Yes. Okay, so uh, his question is, uh, how do I how do I transform this into a short? Right? So how, what is what what is f of v here? f dash of v zero, right? So now note that how did we transform any element? We had to get we had to come from we had to include the second term, right? The second term was in this case will be zero because f dash is zero, right? So if f dash is zero, what do I? If f dash is zero, what what, what does this va transform into? Short, right? So this delta va will be there because that is an incremental input that I have applied. But the original voltage source, the DC voltage source, will be shorted, right? So DC voltage source shorts, DC current source opens. And diode in forward bias is a one quick question before I uh, before I conclude. If I had a diode in reverse bias, what will that be in incremental model? Will it be in incremental model? Uh, okay, right, right. Because because if I look at the IV characteristics of a diode. It goes something like this, right? So this is a current source kind of uh, phenomena. The slope again is in this case, V2I slope is infinite. Since the V2I slope is infinite, it transforms into an open circuit in an incremental sense. Okay, okay, thank you. We'll meet tomorrow.